Hi, this is Danny Doyle, and today, for no reason in particular, I have chosen to do a solo run of Pokemon Scarlet with Sprigatito, my favorite little grass cat, my favorite little key cat grass man. Um, I can't think of another name for him, but he's he's the grass cat. That's what he's called. It's not anything else cat. He's the grass cat. So we're doing this solo run with him today, and I am going to do that. The rules for this run are fairly simple, it's my standard solo run rules. I am only allowed to use Brigatito in battle, I need to defeat all of the battles with just Brigatito and no help from other Pokemon. I cannot use items from the bag in battle, although held items are fair game. And the TMs for Terra Blast, Attract, and Double Team are banned unless my Pokemon can learn them through the natural level up learn set, in which case those TMs are allowed. Since Sprigatito does not naturally learn either of those moves during its level up learn set, I will not be using them in this playthrough. Two other things worth noting before we get into it. The first is that I won't be evolving Sprigatito because this is a Sprigatito solo run, not a Meowskarata solo run. The second is that I require myself to beat all mandatory battles instead of, for example, losing and compressing the story. After all, the Nimona battle and several other battles allow you to lose them and still progress in the story, and I don't like that, so I'm going to be beating Nimona. So after grabbing a sandwich from Mom in order to satisfy our munchies, we are off to do the extended tutorial that I will skip over in lieu of showing you our first gym fight immediately. After all, nothing really interesting happens. Like, I guess we fight Team Skull and Nimona, but like, who fucking cares? That's, it's easy squares. It's easy squares. I could do those fights with my eyes closed. It's worth noting that in Pokemon Scarlet, there's actually three separate stories you're supposed to complete. The first one is the fairly standard, defeat all the gym leaders and become the champion. The second one is to get a bunch of sandwiches, because for some reason I'm very, very hungry. I've got the munchies right now, I don't really know why. And the third one is to go beat up some kids who are playing hooky, because the principal wants you to? What the fuck? I'm not a snitch. Yeah, we're not doing that one. Um, we'll do the other two, though, because I, I want to be champion, and I like sandwiches. But, um, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna snitch on those kids just for skipping school, because skipping school is based. Remember, if you're in school, skip it. It's based. Anyway, all of this talking has made me hungry, so rather than going to the gym fight first, I decided we're gonna start by going for a sandwich. Cloth, the stony titan, is, like, stone type and, you know, stony baloney, so I'm gonna go ahead and show him my own form of stoning by spamming him with magical leaves. I really like magical leaves. Um, so that gets him to run away. I've got a metronome-powered magical leaf that will make it easier to beat him. For those who do not know, metronome makes it so that your move gains 10% power every time that you use it repetitively. So the first time it's at 100% power, the second time it's at 110, the third time it's at 120, etc. I believe it caps at 150, maybe a little bit higher than that, I don't remember. But basically it is a slower but stronger version of Choice Band, because if you continue to spam the same move, it will eventually get stronger than Choice Band, or Choice Specs if it's a special move, but uh, to start out, it tends to be slower, because it starts out at just regular 100%, and then it goes up to 110 and 120, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, that's Cloth taken care of. We used our magical leaves to get stoned. I mean, to, to defeat the stone. Yo, what the fuck is going on? That must be higher than I thought. Anyway, after whatever the fuck that was, I'm allowed to fight Katie, the bug-type gym leader. Bug is super effective against grass, but I have a trick up my sleeve, and that is to use Scratch, which allows Protein to turn me into the normal type. Now, Struggle Bug is just going to be normal effective, so I can set up with Hone Claws, and because of the way Protein works in this game, I don't turn into Dark. I get plus one attack, and I can knock out the Nimble with Scratch. I use Scratch on Tarantula again, but Tarantula is brings me down to the yellow, which is like a little bit scary. Uh, so then comes Teddy Ursa, and Teddy Ursa is going to Terastalize and use Fury Cutter on me, and it honestly might be enough to kill me, even though it's neutrally effective. Now, right now my Terra type is Grass, so I can't even use it to, like, power up my, uh, normal type moves. And instead of Fury Cutter, it used Fury Swipes, and it just dealt a bunch of damage to me. I try to go for a cheeky flinch with Bite, but it doesn't work, and, and then I die. And I can't even solve this problem with, like, an Oranberry, because Nimble is always going to use Bug Bite, so I don't even know what to do here. 
Uh, I think I'll go fight a different gym leader first and see how that goes. It takes me a couple of attempts, but Brasius is fairly easy to take down. I start out by using Hone Claws, which changes me into the Dark type. This loses my resistance to Grass, unfortunately, but I think the boost in attack power is worth it. Hone Claws also boosts accuracy, which is not the biggest deal in the world right now, but will be relevant in the late game. I boost myself up to plus two, and then I get put to sleep. Oh no, how tragic. That is actually pretty inconvenient. But uh, I can just spam bite and hope that I get an early wake up, and maybe that'll be enough. And hey, look, I do get an early break up. Because I'm the dark type because of protein, bite is stab boosted and plus two attack boosted. So it's able to one shot small of as well, and out comes the Sudowoodo, or the Trudowoodo, if you, you use his term. He calls it Trudowoodo because he has it terrestrialized into a grass type. Honestly, I think that's kind of cute. I think it's a little bit stupid that all of the gym leaders Pokemon terrestrialize into the gym type instead of having some that terrestrialize out of that. Like, what if Iono had a Pokemon that terrestrialized into the ground type? Well, I guess that wouldn't make sense, but like a flying type person could terrestrialize into ground type to get rid of the electric weakness or something like that. Anyway, I get a cheeky little flinch with bite, and that pushes me over the edge to the point where I can very, very easily take down this Trudowoodo with stab powered plus two attack powered bite, and I get a critical hit just for the disrespect. So, haha, take that, Brasius. Anyway, that's gym number one. The extra levels I got from Brasius has pushed me to the point where I can learn U-Turn, an 80 power move that will be stabbed if I use it first thanks to Protean. Bug is neutral to Bug, so I can basically just spam this in order to take down Katie. And as a bonus, Protean turning me into a Bug means that her Bug type moves will no longer be super effective against me. They'll only be neutral. So it's neutral versus neutral, Bug versus Bug. I knock out her first two Pokemon in one U-Turn each, and then out comes the Teddy Ursa, who really, really, like, I don't know, I, he bothered me. He bothered me last time by doing his little Fury Swipes thing. He terrestrializes into a bug type, and I throw off a U-turn at him, but it's not quite enough to kill him. Still, he fires off Fury Cutter, and that's not enough to kill me, not even by far. So a second U-turn takes him down. Take that, Katie. Grass is actually better than Bug. This proves it. Speaking of things that Grass is better than, Nimona has a team that is extremely vulnerable to Grass-type moves. She leaves with Rockruff, who goes down to a single Seed Bomb, which is Stab even without Protean. This allows me to uh, potentially use my Protean to change types if I need to defensively, but I really don't need to because I can just spam Metronome-powered Seed Bombs to knock out her Pommy and eventually her Water Terra Coquabble. Uh, yeah, easy fight, easy rival. Nimona is uh, a little dingus, and I think she should quit Pokemon forever. Dummy. Unfortunately, the run is about to start getting a lot harder. We are at the point where boss trainers are regularly going to have at least one semi-evolved Pokemon, and Sprigatito being a first stage just can't keep up with them without being overleveled. This is no more apparent than when Iona's second of four Pokemon Bully Belt just like completely bodies Sprigatito. I think I need to go grind, and yeah, that sucks. There's three potential ways that I can decide to go grinding. The first one is through Terra Raids. This is probably the fastest way to do it because it gets you EXP candies. The second one is through auto battles with wild Pokemon. While this is incredibly slow, it is also fairly brainless, and I can just throw on a video in my other computer monitor and just, you know, watch that while I spam the auto battle button against wild Pokemon. However, the way I decide to grind at this particular junction is to hunt down and battle trainers in the West Province Area 1 of the map. The reason for this is if I can defeat 9 trainers in that area, I can get the clear amulet, which will stop me from getting intimidated. I suspect that this will be important for the Iona fight, because her third Pokemon, Luxray, has Intimidate, and I'd rather not have my attack cut. In general, unless I say otherwise, I'm going to be holding a metronome at almost every point of this playthrough, but this is one of the few battles where I think an item other than metronome is ideal. Now that I've done a sufficient amount of grinding, it's time for my grand scheme to take place. The first step is to use Hone Claws in order to shed my grass type so I'm no longer weak to Wattrell's flying type moves. It means I don't resist the electric attacks anymore, but I think this is a fair trade-off because I don't want to be hit by anything super effective. 
Home Claws is also useful for boosting my stats because I want to get to plus four attack before I fire off anything. I go for Bite, which is neutral and stab because I'm dark type, and then out comes Bully Belt. I decide to Terrastalize at this point to turn into the grass type so I can resist whatever electric attack Bully Belt is planning on firing off, and also so that Speed Bomb gets to be stab. I don't actually know if Terrastalizing back into your regular type causes you to have the standard double stab, or if it gives you just a regular stab because it thinks you're Terrastalizing out of dark into grass. Either way, it's enough to one-shot the Belly Bolt and the Luxray, even through the Intimidate, um, because if you recall correctly, the Intimidate is cancelled out because of Clear Amulet. I go for a final Seed Bomb against Miss Magnus, because even though Bite is super effective, Seed Bomb is going to be more powerful thanks to Stab and potentially Double Stab. I'm not actually sure how that works, but it's enough to knock out the Ghosts. Uh, let me know if you know how Protean and Terrestrialization work with each other. I know you can't use Protean to change out of a Terrastalized type, but I'm wondering if you Protean out of Grass and then Terrastalize back into Grass, do you get the 2 times boost that you would normally get if a Grass type went Terra Grass, or do you just get the regular boost like a Dark type would get into going Terra Grass? Sorry if I'm over explaining things, I'm a little bit high while I'm recording this commentary, because I need to be in character. Now, would it surprise you to hear that the Water type gym is not actually especially challenging for my Grass type Pokémon? I do fire off a Hone Claws at the start because I want to, one, shed my grass type weakness in order to not get hit for super effective by pluck, and two, boost my attack just a little bit in order to be able to knock off Vuvuzela uh, with one hit, but then I seed bomb Vuvuzela, I seed bomb Wug Trio, and out comes Kerbominable, who is super slow and super defensively frail, so say it with me, I seed bomb Kerbominable and bada bing bada boom, water gym down. But, this won't surprise anyone who watched my Christmas special, the real star of the show in this playthrough is Larry. He's going to be incredibly difficult, and also is gating one of the most important tools for solo runs, the ability to change your Terra type. Larry's Pokémon have the ability to put you to sleep or paralyze you, so it's generally advisable to go in with a Lumberry, because if you get put to sleep, you kind of just lose, and if you get paralyzed, you're slower and kind of just lose. Unfortunately, I didn't do that on my first attempt, but even if I had, I don't think I would have been able to beat him. Subsequent attempts, even with the Lumberry, showed me that my little kitty cat was just not strong enough to take on the terrors that are Dunsparce and Kamala, let alone taking on his Staraptor, who is, yikes, yeah, he has Intimidate, and he hits super hard, and has the ability to go super effective against Grass-type, which I'm always going to be, because I'm spamming my most powerful moves. It's just... I don't know what to do, other than grind. Eventually I get to the point where I'm confident in my Sprigatito's abilities. So we start out by turn one, sending off a Home Claws. This transforms into the Dark type and Kamala opens with a Yawn, surprise, surprise. Turn two, we get slammed when we fire off another Home Claws. We fall asleep, but the Lumberry wakes us up and now it's time to Terrastalize into the Grass type. I fire off a Seed Bomb, which with the plus two attack is powerful enough to one-shot Kamala and powerful enough to one-shot the Dunsparce. So out comes the Staraptor. I get intimidated, so now I'm only at plus one attack and we get to watch the extremely long and drawn out cutscene that is unskippable and happens in the middle of the Larry battle. This is one of the more frustrating parts of solo runs and Larry is that you have to, while grinding attempts on Larry, watch this cutscene over and over and over again. I barely defeat Staraptor, and then, uh, yeah, we've beaten Larry, we've gotten the fifth gym badge, but the run isn't over yet, because it's time to fight Nimona. She actually ambushes you directly after whoever your fifth gym badge is, and in most runs, that's going to be Larry. Obviously, you can do them in any order, so, you know, it could be someone other than Larry, but... In a solo run where getting your normal type ability to unterastalize or change your Terra Top or however you want to phrase it is super important, Nimona is usually going to be after Larry. The other gyms are low enough level that you do them pretty early, and Larry is kind of a big deal gatekeeping the Terra Type restaurant. That said, Nimona is pretty easy for a grass type solo run. Like I said, 
She has a rock type Pokemon and a water type Pokemon, and those are both hit by super effective moves. Sprigatito can just boost its attack power by firing off two Hone Claws and then terrestrialize into a Grass type, fire off a Seed Bomb, boom, Lycanroc is down. Out comes Gumi, and I can just play rough. Even though it's not Stab, it's super effective, and I've boosted my accuracy from Hone Claws, so it's probably 100% accurate. I know plus one is 99%. And then I think plus two is, if not 100%, it's statistically close to 100%. Seed Bombs are going to take care of the other two Pokemon. Bada bing, bada boom, Nimona down. Uh, as a preview, Play Rough plus Hone Claws is going to be an incredibly important combination for later in the game. But for now, we've got the ability to change our Terra type, and we are going to go ahead and do that so that we can tackle some more challenges. Specifically, the Open Sky Titan. With the Rock Terra type, we no longer take super effective attacks from its flying type attacks, and we're also pretty over leveled for this fight, so it's kind of trivial. Hilariously so. Still, I didn't want to fight it with a weakness to flying type attacks, so Rock felt like the best way to do that. I guess theoretically I could have used Play Rough to turn into the Fairy type, so I take neutral damage from the flying type attacks, and I'm still doing super effective because it's the dark type, but. Eh, hindsight's 2020. Speaking of hindsight, foresight. Foresight means looking into the future, and looking into the future is a psychic ability. So with that very, very smooth and definitely not forced at all transition out of the way, let's go ahead and take on the psychic type gym leader. She starts with Farigaraf, and I start with Sprigatito. Surprise, surprise. I fire off a home claw so that I can become the dark type in order to gain immunity to Zen Headbutt then fire off another one, and I eat a resisted crunch. The third one, and another resisted crunch, despite the defense drop it not doing much to me, then a plus three bite is enough to knock down Farigaraf. I terrestrialize into the steel type and fire off a play rough, which is going to hit Gardevoir for neutral. And uh, yeah, I didn't even have to early fire my Terra. I was a little bit worried about getting hit by a super effective uh, fairy type attack, but that wasn't necessary. Espartha is faster than me and hits me with Shadow Ball, which brings me down to 47 HP, but I think I'm fine against the Terra Psychic Florgis because Bite just takes it down and bada bing bada boom. We now have Gym Badge number 6. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I didn't even have to do any grinding in between. Nimona is guarding the way to the next gym, and she finally actually poses a challenge to me. Despite the fact that Lycanroc and Quaquavel are all weak to Grass-type moves, they hit very fast and very hard. Rock Slide is going to 3-hit KO me even through the Citrus Berry, and while it doesn't have the best accuracy in the world, I do need to set up on it in order to take down her bulkier Pokémon in the back. I manage to get off plus two and then fire off a Seed Bomb. Thankfully, Lycanroc misses its third Rock Slide because I would have been dead otherwise, but that's just the beginning of my problems. No, Silgu is not one of my problems. Because of the boosted accuracy from Hone Claws, Play Rough has a guaranteed hit of uh, killing it. And because Palmot is a fighting type Pokemon, Play Rough is also going to be doing uh, super effective damage against it. I terrestrialize into Grass in order to resist the electric attack Spark, and out comes Quaquabble. Now Seed Bomb is going to be super effective, so that's going to deal more damage than uh, my fairy type moves, because remember, it sheds its fighting type upon terrestrializing. Still, Seed Bomb knocks it out in one shot, and bada bing, bada boom. This may look easy, but I'll have you know you actually do need to boost with Hone Claws as much as you did because of the number of failed attempts that I had, where I just didn't boost Hone Claws enough and Quaquaval hung on just barely and was enough to kill me. Eventually, I'm probably going to have to get even more overleveled than I currently am. Grinding is not my favorite thing to do in Pokemon, but, uh, you know, we have to do it for the solo runs. Anyway, sit back and relax and watch as my character plays the slalom game on their own, because I actually set down the controller for this. I was curious to see if it was possible to beat this gym challenge without doing anything, and I did. So yeah, I guess that's a certified Luigi wins by doing absolutely nothing moment, except for instead of Luigi, it's uh, the Pokemon Lady. The Pokemon Lady wins by doing absolutely nothing. Alright, next up is Grusha, and while he's normally the 8th gym leader, I decided to take him on 7th in almost every of my solo runs. The reason for this is because the 6th gym leader is a double battle. After firing off a single Hone Claws, which makes me shed my ice weakness, but uh, still take a lot of damage from Blizzard, 
I fire off a Terra Fairy play rough, and that's basically going to be the strategy for the rest of this fight. Outspeed and play rough to one-shot everything. It's stab boosted, and the plus one attack means that I should be able to kill everyone. I'm not sure if the critical hit on Titan mattered or not, but if anyone was able to get off a single attack on me, my little... Sprigatito was going to be dead, so uh, thankfully that didn't happen, and uh, Grusha went down pretty easily. I gotta say, having an Ice-type Gym Leader for the 8th Gym Leader is a little bit pathetic. Ice is kind of a weak type, and this isn't even the first time they've done that. Anyone remember Wolfric? Before going into the double battle with Rhyme, I want to get a couple of extra levels, so I decide to finish off the Titan's quest. Number 3 and 4 are not particularly hard because I am kind of overleveled for them, but Dondozo is very beefy and has unaware, so I can't really set up a Thone Claws. Thankfully, I do have access to a super effective move against him in Seed Bomb, and it's stab even without terastalizing. Doubly thankfully, Metronome isn't affected by unaware because it's not a setup move, so I do continue to get the power boost. Metronome is actually enough to push me over the top in order to defeat the first phase. The second phase is theoretically tougher, but because I'm doubling up with Arvin, and Dondozo has decided to attack Arvin's Pokemon instead of mine, it's actually somewhat easier. I just fire up a couple of more Seed Bombs, boosted by the Metronome item, and uh, also boosted theoretically by the Tail Whips that Arvin's Squirrel is firing off, and uh, we did it! We defeated Dondozo! Unfortunately, that's not the final phase of this Titan fight, because we do still have to fight Tatsugiri, but as I mentioned earlier, my endgame is just Hone Claws plus Play Rough for a 100% accuracy fairy move. And so I go Terra Fairy, Hone Claws. I have an immunity to any dragon type moves, but that's irrelevant because just use Taunt anyway. And then fire off a Play Rough, which is more than enough to bring him into the red. A second play rough is going to kill him, and GG easy. Yeah, Sprigatito is not actually a grass type, he's a fairy type in disguise. Rhyme is next, and it's kind of a weird situation. Because it's a double battle, I feel like I need to be overleveled in order to survive attacks, since I'm not going to be able to one-shot all of the Pokémon. But it also means that it's kind of not a threat whatsoever. Even though they have priority moves and therefore are able to hit me before I turn dark in order to resist their ghost-type moves, they don't hit that hard. And then with a single Hone Claws, I can one-shot every member of the team with a bite with the exception of Nimikyu, who takes two bites because of the Disguise ability. Still, there's not really that much to say. Um, all of Rhyme's Pokémon go down to a single bite, and the majority of them go down before they can even do any damage to me. Mimikyu is constantly chipping away, but it's not really doing that much damage. Um, this fight is in a weird place in solo runs, because it would definitely be much harder if I did it earlier, but you don't do it earlier, because... It's a double battle, you kinda gotta be overleveled. I wish I had more to say about it, because ghost types are awesome, and Rhyme is a really cool gym leader, like I love the fact that she's kind of a rapping grandma, um... She's cooler than her sister at least, I fucking hate her sister, her sister is a piece of shit who tells us trick questions. Anyway, with the 8th gym badge in hand, we can now take on the Elite Four, and first up is Rika, the ground type specialist. Even though Sprigatito is secretly a fairy type Pokemon, he occasionally cosplays as a grass type, so we can fire off Seed Bomb and uh, probably wreck her entire team. I have to go up to plus two because Camerupt is going to be neutral to it because of the fire type resisting grass, but uh, I'm able to one shot Wishcash and I should be able to one shot Camerupt from plus two attack. I don't think that critical hit mattered, but third up is Donphan. Ooh, I forgot about this. Donphan is sturdy. So we can't one-shot, and we definitely die. I think I need a new strategy. And, well, I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. That strategy is luck. I can only afford to take one hit from any of Rinka's Pokémon, because two will kill me. Any combination of two will kill me. Because Donphan has Sturdy, that hit has to be from Donphan, because it's the only Pokémon that I can't one-hit KO. Unfortunately, I also can't one-hit KO Camerupt, unless I grind to an absurd level, and I don't want to do that yet. Two Hone Claws is enough for the one shot, but one is not. And setting up multiple Hone Claws against the Wish Cache nearly guarantees that I'm going to get hit by something. It will go for Blizzard on the first turn, which can miss, but on the second turn it will go for Muddy Water, which the odds of both of them missing are incredibly low. So instead, I want to use Metronome. Metronome pushes it to the point where I'm able to two-hit KO Camerupt instead of three-hit KOing it. 
This means that Camarok just needs to miss a single Fire Blast in order for me to kill the Camarok at full HP. When I'm at full HP, I can fire off my Seed Bomb, which will be boosted to plus 4 with Metronome in order to hit the Dawn Fan down to 1 HP thanks to Sturdy. It's going to fire off a Poison Jab at me, which is super effective but not strong enough to kill me. Seed Bomb will then kill Dawn Fan, and I can one-shot Rika's remaining two Pokemon with Seed Bomb. Knowing all of this, the only thing I can do is continue to try to execute the Seed Bomb Metronome spam. Uh, until I get it right, and unfortunately I get a lot of bad luck. You see, there's two instances of RNG that happen here. First is that Camerupt has a 50-50 chance of going for Yawn, and I can't hold a Lumberry because I need to hold Metronome to get the 2-hit K on Camerupt. This means there's a 50-50 chance of the AI just deciding I don't win this time because I'm going to get put to sleep. In Generation 9, Fire Blast has 85% accuracy, which means that if Camerupt decides to go for Fire Blast, which is a coin flip, I have a 15% chance of dodging it. These odds are pretty bad, but they're not so horrendously bad that I should be here forever, except for that's kind of what happens to me. I end up grinding out this strategy for 30 minutes straight before I finally get an attempt where Camerupt misses Fire Blast. Once I do, it's victory as simple as that, but this took an excruciatingly long time, and I'm hoping that all of this bad luck will come back as good luck for me in the future. Especially because I'm about to face my nemesis Poppy. For anyone who watched the Delibird video, you already know this, but Poppy is a brick wall, or rather a steel wall, for solo runs. Her Pokémon are extremely bulky, and she has a sturdy one just like Rika. But unlike Rika, multiple other of her Pokémon are strong enough and resistant to my Pokémon's moves enough that I can't one-shot everyone, even with the help of Metronome. I was really upset that last time around Poppy was what resulted in me being extremely overleveled for the other two Elite Four members, but with Sprigatito being extremely overleveled is kind of par for the course, because again, I'm a first stage evolution. So it's just a question of how extremely overleveled I'm going to be. Hopefully I can limit the damage, but we'll see. Also, for the sake of full disclosure, at this point in the game, I hacked in rare candies because I didn't want to have to redo all the Elite Four fights, and so instead of grinding in between every failed attempt, I am simply going to be leveling myself up to the next damage rounding threshold, if it seems like I'm not going to be able to win at my current level. This is partially because I hate grinding, and partially because I really didn't want to redo that Rika fight, because the RNG was just very mean to me. But the RNG giveth and the RNG taketh away. And if you've just been listening to this in the background instead of watching, I highly recommend you watch this fight because the luck is so absurd that you have to see it to believe it. I start by firing off a Hone Claws. I can take a single Heavy Slam from Kaparaja and then I die to any other attack. So I fire off Bite, which causes Kaparaja to flinch. I fire off another bite to kill Kaparaja, but considering how little damage I'm doing, I've decided that this fight is probably a loss. Still, I fire off another bite, doesn't one-shot Corviknight, but I get another flinch. And so another fight kills it. Okay, that's two down, but there's three more, and I know that one of them has sturdy. Bite will at least be super effective against Bronzon, but okay, okay, it does kill Bronzon, that's good, that's good. But here comes Magnezone, and this is the problem child, because without... Like, because of Sturdy, I can't one-shot it. But it flinches again! <laughs> uh, so that's Magnazone Town, and at this point, I'm extremely excited. Uh, because Poppy only has one Pokemon left, and it's Tinkaton, who isn't exactly known for being the bulkiest beast out there. So I fire off another bite, and hope and pray that I've hit the damage threshold where I can actually one-shot this Tinkaton. I'm holding my breath through this extremely long terrestrialization cutscene, which is... Yeah, we got her! We got Tinkaton! I got Poppy. I'm only level 88, which is really high, but like for Sprigatito, this is impressive. This is incredible. I'm really excited here. And I want to clarify while we're watching me fight Larry, I'm not holding any sort of item that would boost the flinch chances. I had, as always, a metronome. So I would really love if someone can run the odds of what it was for me to get all of the flinches I needed. Anyway, uh, first up on Larry's team is Tropius. I decided to fire off a Hone Claws because I think it's safe for me to set up here, but he goes to Sunny Day, which means that he's going to go first because of Chlorophyll. Of course he is. Thankfully, even unresisted, Solar Beam isn't hitting me that hard. So I can fire off another Hone Claws pretty safely. Now I'm at plus two attack and plus two accuracy. This means that I can freely fire off Play Roughs and uh, 
That's going to be my strategy. Like I said, secretly Sprigatito is a fairy type Pokemon. And, uh, and then I use my stab play rough and can I just take a moment to talk about play roughs animation like that is peak lazy animation design it just, it just flies forward and then and then the Pokemon is dead um it's very funny it's it's just like once you see it twinkle tackle has nothing on gen 9 play rough I mean don't get me wrong 3d Pokemon animations have always been lazy this isn't me saying like scarlet and violet bad because lazy animations there's other reasons that Scarlet and Violet are bad, but uh, the animation is, its it feels like a parody of the laziness of Pokemon animations. Anyway, that's Larry down. Let's go see if our Fairy Ted can defeat the Dragon Master. Spoilers, it can. This was an absolute bloodbath. It's actually kind of funny when you think about it. Uh, the only Elite Four member who really poses a threat is Poppy. This isn't just the case for solo runs, but I think in vanilla play as well. Three out of four of them have Pokemon who are weak to Ice type, a fairly common offensive move even if you're not running an Ice type Pokemon. A lot of Water types just have an Ice type coverage move. Uh, beyond that, like yeah, the Dragon type is strong, but Fairy is usually going to be either a coverage move or on someone's team. This is probably one of the more pathetic Elite Fours. I know a lot of people shit on Gen 6 as Elite Four, but at least they have a fairly balanced type composition and they can do some challenging stuff. The bigger problem is that they only have four Pokemon each. Um, but here, having five Pokemon doesn't even help. I mean, Hassel terastalizes Baxcalibur out of its ice resistance, even if he's facing an ice type Pokemon. It's kind of pathetic. Speaking of pathetic, let's fight this series' most forgettable champion, Gita. You know, for someone who shows up at multiple points in the story, she's kind of just a nothing burger. I know there's implications that she's like involved in some shady shit in Area Zero, and maybe we'll get more on the DLC, but her team is pathetic and I don't really care for her as a character, so yeah, whatever. Um, anyway, first up, we hone claws in order to gain an immunity to Espothra's uh, meteor crash thing, whatever it is. But then I get jump scared because her Espathra has Opportunist. I guess I played uh, competitive too much and I just assumed that Espathra's only ability was speed boost. But uh, yeah, I don't want to give this thing even more of a boosted attack. So I just one shot it with Bite and hope that we can set up on her second Pokemon, which is Go-Go for some reason. So I Hone Claws again in order to get to the coveted plus two attack. I think this will be enough to one shot the rest of Gita's team. So I decide it's time to terrestrialize and fire off a play rough. I know that's kind of been my go-to strategy for almost every fight other than Rika and Poppy, but I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Unfortunately, I don't one-shot Go-Goat, but Go-Goat just goes for a greedy bulk up. So yeah, <laughs> easy peasy, lemon squeezy, taking down the goat and out comes Gita's third Pokemon, King Gambit. Little early, in my opinion, King Gambit should have been the ace, so that it's guaranteed to get the most boost out of its Supreme Overlord, but, uh, hey, I'm not a Game Freak developer, so, uh, yeah, let's see Avalug. Avalug also is, uh, really, really tanky, so I can't kill it with a single play rough, but, uh, I'm a little bit over-leveled because of Poppy, so, uh, yeah, Avalug down. And out comes Vuvuzela, Vuvuzela, whatever the fuck its name is, the fish. Anyway, Play Rough um, is going to deal more damage because of Stab, since I no longer have Stab on my Grass-type moves. Plus, it's just a higher power anyway, so even if I had Stab on Grass, I'm pretty sure Play Rough would do more. Glamora resists Fairy-type moves, except for Gita does the absolute big brain play of terrestrializing her Poison-type into a Rock-type when facing a Fairy-type who has been sweeping her team by spamming a single Fairy-type move. So yeah, we one-shot it. Um, good job. You are so smart. I'm, I can totally see how you became champion. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if, if you want. It, or, or don't, you know, I'm not the boss of you. Bye.